So it's been six months already until the iPhone 12s were released and this is about the time when some people start making a purchase decision on whether to buy one of these or wait until the next model of the iPhone. Here's what to expect if you were to go for the iPhone 12 Pro. This is the 128 GB variant in the silver color. When unboxing this Pro iPhone from its packaging, a clear theme became apparent. This was designed to impress. Even before peeling off the screen sticker, I had the urge to further inspect the materials used on this iPhone. And trust me, I did straight after this satisfying moment. The frosted glass back was so smoothly finished giving me the sense that I was holding one of the best iPhones on the market right now. Surgical grade stainless steel sides are perhaps what makes this phone cement its place accordingly as a real pro device. Even though the overall button aesthetics are very similar to the iPhone 12 and 12 mini, it becomes very obvious straight from the unboxing that this phone is substantially higher in price. Everything from a design point of view seemed to have been given extra care. The silver rings around the rear camera modules match nicely with this snow-like white coating. The iPhone 12 Pro represents what an iPhone used to be perceived as a luxury tech product that happens to also be a smartphone. As strange as that sounds, that really was the message that was sent with the first ever iPhone. And here we are with the iPhone 12 Pro and I'm saying similar things and that can only be a good thing. But yes, as this is a smartphone, it has contents inside the box. Inside the box, you only get tidy amounts of paperwork filed closely with the SIM ejector tool and the now normal single Apple sticker. As ironic and annoying as this was, these things are not really what I placed much importance on anyway. But the obvious lack of a charging brick is something that didn't sit well with me. The lonely USB-C to lightning cable is the single useful accessory inside the iPhone 12. Pro box. I think it would not seem strange at this point if somebody began to pack away the skimping contents inside the box and question their purchase decision altogether. After all, the almost £1,000 price tag really deserves to warrant a bit more than this, right? Let me know your thoughts, guys, with a comment below. And also subscribe to the Tech Moments channel for more tech content like this in the moment. Moving on to the startup of the phone, and there were no nasty surprises here. It was quick to set up a face ID and the migration of apps was quite seamless. I did have a concern early on though with the rear of the iPhone 12 Pro which got noticeably hot when downloading apps in the background. I'm assuming this is just an initial startup response however I'll report more in my upcoming real day review of this device so keep your eyes peeled for that video. As my biggest interest on a phone lies in the display and the cameras I thought I'd briefly compare this display of the 12 Pro to the recently reviewed iPhone 12 and also the iPhone 10s as that phone is in and around perhaps what is the most commonly upgraded from iPhone right now. Going back to the 12 Pro's 6.1 inch display, it's very reminiscent of the panel found on the regular iPhone 12. This is not a bad thing on paper, after all, it's a full HD, immensely bright, fully fledged OLED, except for the lack of a higher refresh rate, but that's a separate topic, therefore I'll probably save it for another video. My first impression of the screen, however, was that it presents a slightly underwhelming argument to match its substantially higher price tag when compared compared to the standard iPhone 12. Even in the camera department, there isn't a huge difference when you place the photos out of the 12 Pro next to another recent iPhone. This triple comparison image really shows that there isn't a huge difference in the iPhone 12 Pro's pictures and the two other very capable phones. Yet it is noticeable, at least for me, which version of this shot I prefer. But the 12 Pro only edges it with its more detailed and well-lit approach. In fact, this pretty much direct comparison between the iPhone XS's 2X zoom image and the iPhone 12 Pro's 2x photo emphasizes where the iPhone 12 Pro is substantially ahead the vibrancy. Yes, these images are a lot brighter without being overexposed due to the well-harnessed HDR capabilities on the iPhone 12 Pro. The difference in the picture quality between the 12 Pro and the regular iPhone 12 are less obvious, but nonetheless there is a difference, particularly in portrait mode. Firstly, the 12 Pro has the ability to take legit low-light portrait mode images thanks to the LiDAR scanner on board. This also provides the iPhone 12 Pro better depth sensing capabilities 
qualities. Therefore, its portrait shots just look better overall compared to the iPhone 12. There's also a portrait mode available in 2x zoom range, which is not present on the regular iPhone 12. All of this just amounts to a better, better package when it comes to the iPhone 12 Pro's camera department. But this doesn't exactly amount to much, much better photos in the actual results of images once they are processed. This theme, to be honest, continues as you can see with these recordings. So the first one is 4K 60 frames per second with the iPhone 12 Pro. And the second one is with the iPhone 10s. And you can see there isn't a stark difference. Nonetheless, the iPhone 12 Pro does perform a lot better in the vibrancy and overall detail. Yes, I know this is 2021 and I'm giving my early impressions on this phone. But yes, I just happen to have this in for review. So a thumbs up to the video will be great. And a subscribe to the channel would be even better to just support the channel a bit more. And that would go a long way. So that's it from me, guys. And that's it from this video. I'll see you guys in the next tech moment.